how's it going everyone? This is Brendan Bias from ggcheckit.com and welcome to another HTML and CSS tutorial. In the last tutorial I showed you guys a lot of the basics of div tags and CSS and how to go about using those two together. And today's tutorial I think uh, sounded appropriate would be to show you guys how to use that knowledge to create a navigation menu. And uh, until now I've been using Adobe Edge code to do all of my HTML and CSS coding. However, in the latest update of Google Chrome, uh, Adobe Edge Code has been having some compatibility issues. Uh, when you try to use the live preview, it ends up getting some kind of error and the live preview doesn't work. So basically what I've done is I've swapped over to brackets, added some new you know extensions and some other whatchamahoosits, and uh, now I'm basically using brackets for my HTML and CSS coding. So uh, it's basically the same program, should all be the same. However, I do have a couple new tabs and stuff like that because I've added in some fun extensions and whatnot. So if you want a list of the extensions that I'm using, I'll add those in the description and you can you know, use them, try them out for yourself. And if not, just you know, feel free to follow along without them. It shouldn't really make any difference. Now you will notice that there is a slight difference between uh, my existing document and the ones that we finished uh, in the previous tutorial. And I'll just go really quickly through uh, what I did. Uh, I added in a new div called header contents. And uh, if you were to simply look at our existing document, you shouldn't really notice uh, any difference. Everything looks pretty clean as it was before. Uh, however, if I go in, and I add in a background of, I, know, I guess we'll just do black since it's pretty prominent. Uh, you'll notice that we have a big chunk here that is representative of the header content div. Uh, the reason that I made this is so that way anything that we put into this particular div will be constrained to the width of 1024 pixels, which in my mind is a really good size if you're viewing a website uh, on a desktop computer because I, I'm pretty sure uh, most monitors nowadays are at least 1024 pixels in width for your resolution. Uh, let's see what else there is to do. I don't think uh, anything else uh, really comes to mind. Everything goes inside of this div. It's centered with margins, which I will show you how to do in another tutorial. And also, just now that I'm looking at it now, guys, a very useful feature of brackets that I don't think I've mentioned before is the ability to edit uh, CSS styling inside of your index.html. Uh, here's what I mean. So you'll notice that I opened up this little menu and it shows the dot header content CSS styling. However, that CSS is not present anywhere in the existing uh, index.html page. Uh, the reason that is, is this code is actually inside of the style.css. So you notice that dot header content starts on line 11. And if I go back, you'll notice that indeed header uh, content starts on line 11. So I'm basically adding and removing lines directly from my style.css. You'll notice that I got rid of that, that background property and it's, it's gone, you know? So it goes back and forth uh, by hitting Control or Command E. You can open up this little menu here and edit your CSS directly. Pretty cool, pretty handy. Okay, so enough blabbering on and on. Let's go ahead and finally create our navigation menu. And of course, with any HTML uh, PHP, JavaScript, whatever, uh, any coding whatsoever, there is a variety of ways to go about doing pretty much the same thing. And when it comes to navigation menus, um, one of the popular ways to do it is to simply create a div element for every link that you want to have. And normally that's what I do, but I kind of want to mix things up a little bit and show you guys a bit more of a interesting way to go about doing that by creating our navigation menu with an unordered list. And the first step for this is to create a div which will serve as our container for the navigation. And we're gonna give this a class of nav. Now, for those of you that uh, already know a little bit of HTML5, there is a tag called nav that you 
typically used for your navigation bars. But I really want to avoid HTML5 since it's still one of those things that's relatively new, not 100% supported by all browsers. And by all browsers, I mean uh, Internet Explorer, you know, because it sucks. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and avoid uh, any kind of HTML5 tags. So let's uh, just stick with our div here and let's uh, let's go ahead and make our unordered list. Make sure to open and close it. And then inside of it, we'll have our list item, which will be the container for each one of our links that we want to have on our page. So inside of our list item, let's do an anchor tag and make sure we don't forget our href. And let's do a... Uh, a pound symbol in there to make sure that it's a somewhat functioning link. And then we'll simply uh, copy and paste this a couple of times to represent each one of the links we want to have in our navigation menu. And inside of the anchor tag, let's put in the text for the name of each one of our links. So let's do the home, uh, the about, uh, I guess we could do like a products page and last but not least let's do a contact us page so these are just some very basic uh, pages that we could have in our website so let's just see what it looks like on our website uh, right now all it is is a very simple unordered list has the dots next to it because that's you know what happens in unordered lists and right now it's pretty boring nothing flashy and it's actually pretty unprofessional looking so let's uh, start making this look a little bit nicer the first thing I want to do is to give the nav container a little bit more spaz so let's uh, do control E or command E if you're on a Mac to open up the CSS ruling for the nav let's click new rule and let's give it a, a height of 40 pixels and let's give it a, oh, I'm failing at spelling here. Uh, let's give it a background with a color of A7E0EE -E, and finish that off with a semicolon. And let's swap back and we should see we do indeed have a uh, nice blue bar there for our uh, navigation. And you'll notice that our unordered list has a bit of a gap off to the left hand side so let's go ahead and fix that now uh, let's go inside the style.css this time and do dot nav ul and so this way we are editing the unordered list within our dot nav and uh, for this let's set the margin to zero and the padding to zero uh, just just to clarify, there is a difference between margin and padding, but we're not going to be going over that in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and go back, and we should notice that the text is now flush along the left-hand side of the nav bar. Now, however, we do have some pesky little dots off the left-hand side. So what do you say we go ahead and get rid of those annoying little pricks there? So let's do dot nav ul li. So now we are editing the list item inside of our unordered list inside of our .nav. Oh man, that's a mouthful, ain't it? Aha. All right, so in order to get rid of that dot, we need to change the style of it. So we need to go to list style, and you notice that there are a variety of ways to style that dot. So you can uh, make it a square, you can change it to, uh, you know, like a Georgian thing or a disc. You know, you can uh, experiment with all kinds of different list styles, uh, but our purpose here is to set that to none, which should effectively get rid of those pesky little dots. All right, so now I think the next thing to do is to make these links uh, sit next to one another and not have these annoying little underlines. So uh, next up, let's do .nav ul li a for anchor. And let's see, let's get rid of the, uh, the decoration. So text decoration. Uh, for this, we have either the line through the overline or the underline, uh, and we want to set this to none, and that should get rid of that underline for us. 
Uh, next up, we need to make sure that these suckers, um, you know, let's, let's get this a little bit further up for you guys to see. Uh, now we want these guys to sit next to one another, and to do that, we need to set a float uh, to the left. And so now all of these should float next to one another. Uh, next thing we need to do is make sure that there isn't quite so much gap between them. So to do that, uh, we need to, uh, first of all, display as a block element. And by doing so, we're able to add in some padding. And we can do 10 pixels, 20 pixels, and that should give us uh, a nice set of gap between each one of our list items here. Now, uh, what this does is uh, it displays as a block element which is allowed to have padding on it and the padding adds a bit of a gap to the top and bottom of 10 pixels and we'll do a left and right gap of 20 pixels each. And there is a uh, more specific way to get into this but once again I'll probably cover that a little bit more in another tutorial. Now another thing that we can do now that we're uh, messing with the the styling of our text here is to change the color of it so that it's a little bit more appealing or you know at least has a bit of an animation when we roll over it. So the first thing we'll do is add in a color and just for simplicity we'll make it black so it's nice and easy to notice. And let's do another style here and let's do ULLIA and at the end of this anchor let's do a colon and the word hover. And basically, this is now a CSS style that will only take place when you hover over this particular type of anchor point. So now if we do a color of white, which is, you know, very plain and boring, I admit, but we should now be able to see that hover uh, CSS style take, a play, uh, take place. Wow, I cannot talk today. Uh, anyway, now we have a very simple yet effective... A uh, set of styling that gives us a nav bar. And now I'm looking at it, there needs to be a bit of a gap above uh, the nav. So let's go into dot nav and give it a margin top of like 20 pixels and kind of nudge that away from our uh, image up top. And just one last thing I like to add in is a bit of a bar right below the navigation that spans all the way across the page. So Let's go back to our HTML documents, and outside of the header is where we need to put this. Uh, actually, we can do it right inside the header. That's not too bad of an idea, actually. Uh, anyway, let's do a new div. Uh, we're going to call this class. Uh, we're going to give this a class of header break. All right, and all we're going to do here is make sure that it goes all the way across real quick. Uh, give it a height of zero and we're gonna give this a border on the bottom of it and we're gonna make it two pixels make sure it's solid and we're gonna do that same color we had before which was a7 e0 ee -E. and so now we should have a two pixel solid uh, bluish colored border on the bottom of this uh, hopefully invisible div so if we go back we should indeed see we have a nice little border uh, right below our navigation menu. So, uh, I believe this is good enough for one tutorial. I've been blabbering on and on for about, you know, 15 minutes nearly about here. And uh, I think we've covered enough grounds. I do believe um, there are some more things that we can do, but we'll cover that. Uh, a little bit more in the next tutorial. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I'm very welcome to ideas as for what I should cover, what I should explain. So uh, feel free to give me feedback on that. And also, if you guys learn something new, enjoy the tutorial, stuff like that, please give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to stay around for the end of the video to uh, the part where we show off uh, our favorite comments from uh, the previous video. So. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. I will see you next time.